Hello and welcome to the tutorial on how to create images using a starting image with Disco Diffusion. This is my fourth tutorial in this series and this will probably end the beginning and intermediate tutorials. The next one I'm going to start on is animation. But for now let's focus on using a starting image because this is also going to be very important for animation as I'll show you later in this tutorial. Now the first thing you want to do just set it up like normal and you, what you will need here, you're going to need a starting image. So you're going to need a PNG file, and it's going to need to be a multiple of 64. And Disco Diffusion will turn your file into a multiple of that if you don't have it. So um, what I have first here, I have an image of a mountain lake that we're going to start with here. Now what you want to do is you want to find the folder that has that image. And what you're going to do is you're going to drag it over here to this folder. So it's, this should just be the first folder here. When you just hit your folders over here on the left side of your notebook, it should be that first folder there. And it will just store it there temporarily. When the session is done, your notebook will delete it. But I'm going to take and drag my mountain lake image over here. Okay, and there it is. Now what you want to do is right click it and copy it. And then you want to paste it right here where it says in init image, initial image. And there it is. And now right now I have 200 steps for this and I am skipping the first 160 steps. So when you do a starting image, you also want to use the skip steps option. And I'll show you what that does. Right now I'm skipping 160. And now the next thing you want to do is you're still going to use a text prompt. And right now I have a futuristic foggy city in a sci-fi landscape by Claudio Erico and Ralph McQuarrie. And then I'm going to go ahead and run the notebook. Okay, now if you'll notice, it starts with only 40 steps to go. So since we skipped the first 160 steps, it's not going to take very long to render. And also, since we skipped the first 160 steps, that means that for the one, first 160 steps, it didn't do anything to try to change the image. It just kept the image the same. So that's why it still looks the same. And I don't anticipate that it's going to change too much. So this is kind of the extreme. This is not really what you want to do, but I just kind of want to show you the process here. And also, if you remember, it will diffuse the image. It will change the image less and less the further you go towards the end. So that's our image, and it looks basically exactly the same. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to go back up to the skip steps. This time, we're only going to skip 20 steps. That means out of our 200 steps, we're skipping 20. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and run our program again here. Okay, and here we go with the run again. And now if you notice, it is now has 180 steps to do. And also the image doesn't look as much like it did before. Now it just kind of has a really fuzzy outline of what we started with. Because for the first 20 steps, it used that image. So it didn't get, it didn't get very far on it. Okay, and so you can see if you notice really what this kind of did was it just kind of gave a starting point. But now Disco Diffusion is just going to kind of go by what our prompt said, which, you know, is kind of what we're used to doing now up to this point. So the idea here with the starting image, you can use it as just kind of a general guideline, kind of like we did here, or you can use it to really just tell Disco Diffusion, okay, this is what you're making, you know, and skip a whole bunch of the steps. And normally when you're using these, what you kind of want to do is find a happy medium for however you want your image to turn out. If you just want to use it to modify an existing image, then you want to skip, you know, like about half of the steps is kind of a norm for that. Okay, and you can see now Disco Diffusion is slowly making what we have for the prompt here, the futuristic sci-fi city. And it doesn't really look like our starting image much at all here. And so this is our final image here now that we've rendered. And you can see, like I was saying before, it is quite a bit different from our starting image. So let's say we want to, we want it to look like the starting image, but we just want to change it a little bit. So here's another thing you can do too. I am going to change my clip guidance scale. This is kind of what pushes the the diffusion process to make your, your image like the prompt a little harder. So I'm going to turn that down as well. This time I'm going to skip um, 120 steps. So now we're kind of in the middle on this one, and we're going to go ahead and do the run again here. And again, it's going to use this text prompt here, a futuristic foggy city in a sci-fi landscape, and it's going to diffuse that starting image to try to make it look like the text prompt. Okay, our run is starting now, and you can see it now has 100 steps left to go, and it's already done 100 steps. So it still does look quite a bit like 
our starting image here. But we did give it, but it still does have 100 steps to go. So now you can see, though, it does still have some room to change it. And like I said, too, um, the further you go on, the less it changes it. So if we would have skipped like 20 or 40 more steps, it might not have changed it much. And it's probably after the next run here, it's probably going to look pretty similar to it is now. It's not going to start changing a whole lot from here, but this just kind of shows you how you can modify existing images to kind of use them as starting points. And that's actually the next image. I'm going to show you something else you can use to your advantage to kind of tame Disco Diffusion to making the image you want and maybe keeping, you know, like um, buildings out of the sky and that kind of thing. Now, another thing about the diffusion process is that it needs it needs pixels and small dots. How it creates the image is it removes noise. It basically removes noise and it pushes the image to look like your prompt. So we can take advantage of that by guiding it using our own images that might not necessarily be images, but we can just kind of create noise images to use. And I'll show you which, what I mean by that here. Okay, and so this is an image that I generated just in the art program and basically I just use a spray brush and you see I have a lot of blue dots here, green dots. Now I want you to notice too up here in the sky, this is completely smooth. So what this will do is this will prevent Disco Diffusion from creating anything up here where it's smooth because it doesn't have any, any dots to remove it. It can't diffuse because there's nothing there to remove. So what I'm gonna do is use this to create an image where it, it'll leave my sky alone. That way there's not gonna be buildings up here and things where it don't belong. So again, the first thing I want to do is to drag my starting image over there. Okay, there it is. And then I right click and copy the path. I go up here to my initial image. I paste it and run it. And this time I'm gonna change the prompt a little to a lake, lake in front well, we'll just do a lake in a mountain landscape because that's kind of what I, I created this diffusion image here. And again, here's the image. So I created this image to just kind of make a mountain landscape where I can tame it, where I have the mountains here, the lake's going to be here, and then it might have, you know, some grass on the sides and it's going to leave the sky alone. So it's not going to put mountains and trees in the sky so I won't have to edit it later. Okay, and now I've got my text prompt there and I'll just do a simple... Uh, I'll tell you what, let's do by Bob Ross. We'll make a happy little mountain landscape here in honor of the great legendary Bob Ross. I'm going to go ahead now and and you want to make sure you run this. Anytime you change your initial image, you got to run this again. And again, we're doing 200 steps. We're skipping 100 of them, about half of them. And then we got to run our text prompt here. And then let's go ahead and start our image. Okay, and you see now here's our image. And that looks like a really good starting place for mountains and a lake. We've got brown here, the blue there. And here's the sky. Again, if you notice, Disco Diffusion isn't touching that smooth part of my starting image. So it's just going to leave that sky alone, and there's not going to be anything weird up there in the sky. So this is a great way also to just to kind of have some control over how your image turns out. Okay, and our image is winding down here. Now, if you notice, it does creep up a bit in there, but it'll pretty much leave those areas alone. If you let it, you know, if you do a lot of steps, it will get in to those smooth areas. But this is a really great way to just kind of control how your image turns out. And our image is finishing up here. Now, if you notice too, it didn't, you know, it didn't turn out really great. So what we could do actually is we could turn down the steps a little bit, you know, give it a little more time to generate the image. So let's go ahead and do that, especially when you're using these images that there's not much to start with. You really want to kind of give the diffusion process a long enough, uh, enough steps to generate the image to your prompt. So this time we're going to actually go ahead and skip about 40 steps this time, only 40. So this will give Disco Diffusion 160 steps to make our mountain lake scene here. So let's go ahead and run it again and see if we get a little more detail in this one. Okay, and our scene's starting up here now. If you notice too, it shows you exactly what it's starting from. So if you start your image here and you don't like the starting point like it doesn't look clear enough of what you wanted your initial image to be then go ahead and stop it and adjust your steps so the let the more abstract of an image you give it the more freedom it kind of has to generate random stuff so if you notice now it still has 130 steps to go at this point so it's going to have lots of time to generate a nice a nice scene here for us we just kind of gave it a little bit of guidance
So you can gently tell Disco Diffusion to make you an image, or you can, you know, grab it by the arm and say, hey, you're making this kind of image. So that's a really great thing about this program. That's one of the reasons why I love it is just all the micromanagement options you have with this program. And our images come along nicely now. You see that we do have a little more action in the sky this time because of the the further freedom we've given Diffusion to make our image here, and it's really making a nice, you know, a Bob Ross looking landscape scene here. Okay, and I think you got the idea now here on how we can use our own diffusion maps that we can make ourselves. I'm also going to at some point make some for people to kind of use as templates. And I'm going to post those somewhere. I might start a Patreon page. I'm not sure yet, but I am going to start being a lot more active here. So I also made a next one for kind of a coral scene underwater. And I'll show you that one here. And so you can really use your imagination. And all you need is any kind of program that just can make dots, you know, like your traditional airbrush kind of program. So I'm going to go ahead and so I'm going to go ahead now and load this into my notebook. Okay, and I've got my ocean coral image here that I'm going to use for our starting image. I'm going to copy the path. Going to get up here and paste it in the initial image. Make sure to run this. That's something I forget quite a bit. And then we don't want to lake in a mountain this time. We're going to change it to what we want our image to be, which is going to be corals. Okay, and I'm skipping 40 steps out of 200. That'll give it 160 steps to make our prompt here, which is coral reef and clownfish in the ocean. And I'm just going to put the good old trending on art station. I'm not going to look up a specific artist for this one. Okay, and we've started our run now. And we only have 160 steps to do. That's another great thing about using starting images is that it always cuts down the time. But this one, I don't really like this one. It kind of didn't take enough of the image, so I'm going to go ahead and skip a few more. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip 80 steps out of 200, just to retain a little bit of the color that I put in there for the image. Again, you can look at this starting image. If you think, ah, uh, you know, I want it to kind of look more like my picture, then you just skip more steps. Okay, there we go. Now it's got some of that color I put in there. This should make a nice coral reef here, so we'll let this one run. Okay, and our scene's moving along here, and it's already looking like it's starting to generate the clownfish and some corals there. Okay, and as our image is winding down, you can see how we use the prompts along with the starting image to really generate the kind of image, just the kind of image we want to make. So this is just another tool Disco Diffusion gives us to get more coherence for our images. Okay, and here we go, and here's our final image. And this really shows you how you can really use those starting images to make exactly the kind of image you want Disco Diffusion to create. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you here is really cool. This is how you can use it to just kind of modify an existing image. And this is going to be really important to make videos. And I'll, I have my, actually my own technique of making videos. And it will save you a lot of time. And I really don't think anybody's doing this quite yet. But I have just posted a new video today also called Take Your Life. And the next image that I'm going to show you, I actually used a video from the same image, the girl wearing a cosplay costume, to make a video out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can really use Disco Diffusion to modify existing images, which is great if you're doing a profile picture for yourself, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so here's the starting image I'm using, and this is just a public domain picture that I just did by doing a cosplay search on Pexels, and I have a link down there as well. Pexels is a great resource for public domain images, and you get unlimited use and everything. So you see this girl, she just kind of has, you know, a cosplay costume there, and this is going to be our starting image. So the first thing I need to do is drag my image over here to the folder again, and we will right-click, copy it, and paste it. Now, this image is a different scale, too. It is higher than it is wide, so I need to change my resolution here a bit. Okay, and make sure you run this. And now I'm going to change this to, let's see, what should we make here? Let's just say an alien. We're just going to put a female alien. Trending on art station. And we're skipping 80 steps. Now, this is one also where I'm going to want to see and make sure I got enough of that starting image, you know, because let's say this is like a profile you're doing for your Facebook page for a person and they really want it to look like them still. So we're just going to run this and see how it starts off here. And we'll see if it has enough to where you can still recognize the original image. And if it doesn't, then we're going to go and we're going to skip more steps. The more steps you skip, the more it will look like the original image. 
Okay, and it still has the form, but it doesn't really look like them, so we're going to go skip a few more steps. So this time we're going to skip, let's skip 120 steps. So we, we, like I said, we want enough so you can still recognize the initial image, and that looks about perfect. That kind of turns it into kind of a 3D model, so it's going to alter it a bit, but it'll still retain, it should retain enough of the original image where you could still recognize the picture. If this was somebody you knew, you know, or your profile picture, this is a really cool way to alter your profile picture. And so that's how you use Disco Diffusion to modify an existing image. Now I have also posted a video today of one of my songs where I actually also use synth vocals, but at the very end of the song of the video, I do show it's about a 30 second short video, but it's going to be videos I'm going to be making a lot of in the future. And it kind of uses the same process. I used the same character, the same person from Pexels, and I made a video out of it. So if you want to check that out, I'm going to be showing people how to do that at some point. It's actually a technique that is not widely used yet, at least as far as I know, and I'm going to be showing how to do that. But I hope this tutorial really helped you. And if you want to check that video out, you can see how, how powerful... Um, this tool is. It's really great to use these starting images with Disco Diffusion. It really gives you a lot more control over your final outcome. So be sure and hit that like and subscribe. And I will be coming back with more videos in the future. Thank you for watching.